Hi, this is Eric Skaggs. The following demonstration is from my SharePoint 2010 development training course. I'm going to do a fairly basic example of working with Connect the Web Parts to give you the basic premise for how this works. And I'll start by creating two web parts and essentially we're going to define a message in the provider web part and then connect the web parts when connected the consumer web part will display the message from the message property of the provider web part and I'm going to close out our visual web part project and I'll start by creating a new Visual Studio 2010 empty SharePoint project file new project empty SharePoint 2010 Let's call this, I'm going to call this web part connected web parts. Sam, uh, not a sandbox, but a farm solution and click finish. And now that the new solution has been created, we'll start by right clicking the project node, selecting add new item. And I want to start off with a C sharp interface because we have to define the interface through which the two web parts will connect. And I'm going to name my interface in a way that somewhat matches Microsoft's naming conventions. I'll call this interface iMessage. And the interface itself will be defined as follows. It's a public interface iMessage and all it says is any class implementing this interface must have a string message. So it must have a string property. In this case, it's called message. So in this case, we'll save our interface and close that file. Now that we've defined the interface, we'll right-click the project node and add another new item. And now we'll add a SharePoint web part. And we'll call this web part provider. This will be the provider web part in our web part connection. And the class will be defined as follows. And the web part class itself, WP Provider, must implement the interface. And in order for this class to implement the interface, after the web part class here, I'm going to have a comma and simply type iMessage. That tells the compiler in Visual Studio that my new WP provider class inherits from web part but implements the iMessage interface and now that we're implementing the iMessage interface that Visual Studio compiler will then check to make sure that I have a public property in here that is a string so let's take a closer look at what's going on inside this class I have a private string variable called underscore message which is it defaults to no message altogether then I have a public property in this case the property is a string called message and when you call the get method of this public message property that returns the internal private message when you call the set method we set the private message to whatever value is coming in and you'll notice on line 17 through 19 here that my property message has been decorated as being web browsable it has a web description, a display name, it's personalizable, and it's in its own category. This is now referred to as a web part property. This decoration on line 17 through 19 essentially decorate this property so that it appears in the tool pane of the web part when we edit it in the browser. And I'll show that to you in a moment. Moving down, because this is our web part provider this web part will be connected to other web parts one day it has to have a method that's decorated as the connection provider and what are we providing we're providing a message the method name here is send message which returns the iMessage interface in this case itself as for the create child controls method the provider is not doing anything in its create child controls method. So really in this example, the web part provider is just going to sit on a page and not contain any values. All it's going to do is send its own property of message over to the consumer. So we can save that file and we'll move on to create the web part consumer next. 
To create the web part consumer, we'll do a similar method of right clicking the project node, selecting add new item, standard web part, we'll name this new web part web part consumer. And that's going to give me a new class, WP Consumer, inheriting from web part. And we'll define the class as follows. This class has a private local string underscore received message, which is initially set to no message received. Being a consumer web part, it has to have a method that's decorated as a connection consumer, in this case, consuming a message. And the connections consumer method here is called receive message, and it takes in the iMessage interface, and it simply sets the internal received message to be the message property of that message interface. And finally, what we'll want to do is take the create child controls method of this consumer web part and add the message to it. And we can do so using a literal control where the text of the literal control equals that of my received message. And we'll set that as follows. Save all of my files. And now at this point, we will deploy the solution after we make some changes. So again, some of the standard changes I like to make. No activation on the project. Select the feature. No activation on the feature. We want to name the feature something meaningful, so we'll call this Connected Web Parts. Adds a couple of web parts that can be connected. Save all those files there. I'd like to rename my feature files. Feature Connected Web Parts. Save all. Now, Let's close everything and give this a shot at deployment. Right click and deploy. And deploy has succeeded. We see that in the status bar, so I should be able to come out to the browser now. Refresh the home page of the training site, which again takes a moment after deploying a solution. And I should be able to go to site settings down to site collection features I have a new feature called connected web parts which will activate now that that feature is activated I can return home edit the home page I should be able to insert web part from the custom category my web part provider over here on the right I'll insert my custom web part consumer and now what we'll do is we'll actually connect these two web parts. You'll notice that the web part consumer currently says no message received. Well, if I connect these two web parts, I'll edit the provider. That simply puts the page in edit mode. But if I open that same drop down again, now I've got a connections menu. I can send a message to that consumer. And you'll notice how the word here is message. The reason we see message here is because over in Visual Studio, in the provider web part in the code behind, our connection provider is decorated with message. So actually this text here that says message could be anything, but we've called it message and therefore that's what we see when we go back to the browser. Right here. Send message to and when you're building a web part connection in this fashion using these built-in dialogs you'll notice that the you can go either way essentially I could start from the provider and send a message to the consumer or I could start from the consumer and get a message from the provider either way works just fine so if I click on that now my consumer says no message and if I want to change the message what I actually have to do is edit the properties of the provider which opens up this tool pane on the right hand side and you'll see that I have an additional category here called custom properties which I can open up and set the message hello from the provider web part 
We'll click OK. And now my web part consumer displays, hello from the provider web part. This is a string message that's actually defined over here in the provider web part, but it's being sent to the consumer via and through this web part connection on this page. So this can be very useful to create some interactivity. Now this is a very simple example. Later on we'll see a bit of a more robust example involving trainers, registrations, and classes. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training videos, please visit www.trainsignal.com.